Hello everyone and welcome to Etalon. Previously on my channel, I spoke about how I'm currently still in lockdown here in Sydney and thought while waiting for supplies to arrive, it would be so much fun to revamp some of the original design Monster High series dolls that I have in my collection. Starting out, of course, with Frankie Stein. Ah yes, she's so cute. As of that revamp, I was asked by so many of you to revamp one of the most popular characters from the series, and of course, I was so excited to do so. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, like the video if you like it, and comment, I love reading your comments. With that all being said, let's get started on revamping Draculaura. To get started on this project, we of course need a Draculaura doll. This is one I've had in my collection for a very long time now. As I said in a previous video, I've been accumulating original designed Monster High dolls to revamp in my own style. I really love collecting toys and figures, so it was so chuffed to finally have stumbled upon this doll. This doll was in such great condition. I had half a mind to just leave her as is. I was somewhat alarmed when I noticed her around her hairline, however. The vinyl had started staining from the glue and hair over time. While it's the smallest, smallest discrepancy, I definitely could have left it as it is, but my monkey brain said no and I had to revamp it. So let's prep it for customization. As well as the staining, ever since I did the hair from my previous doll, I feel I would be remiss if I didn't attempt to remake the hair. Working with a character with the constraints of colour and design is such a fantastic opportunity for skill development. Getting some hot water from the kettle, I'm going to just plunge the head in the hot water for about 30 seconds. This will loosen the vinyl so I'm able to remove the head without breaking the neck peg. But as well, it will soften the glue inside the head, making removal of the hair plugs easier from the inside. Getting my pliers, I'm just going to wiggle around inside the head through the neck hole. When I went to remove the hair, it came out in one gigantic clump. It was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> now for a clean slate. Getting 100% acetone and a cotton swap, I'm going to remove all the factory paint, as well as any dirt, grime or oils from handling. Once that was all clean, I washed it with some warm soapy water and then gave this doll's head a spray of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish and we can start building this doll's new face. Using my Faber-Castell watercolour pencils, I'm going to start sketching out a basic eye shape design. Here I'm going in with light colours and we'll be building up the intensity over time. I really had to erase the ends of the eyes so many times. The eye shape that I really wanted to lean towards for Draculaura was a downturn design with partial hooded eyelids on the outer corners. Of course, at the moment, it doesn't look hooded really at all, but once I start adding more layers, it'll start to pull the shape together. The plan I had for Draculaura was to lean heavily into more of an alternative style of makeup with heavy shadows and pigments, but not doing it in the same way that I did for Frankie for instance, where it was a blend of makeup and shadows to hollow out the eye sockets, but to give her more of an illusion that she herself has applied this makeup. Of course, if you're not familiar with Monster High lore, Draculaura is a vampire. I didn't want to lean too heavily into the idea of giving her a ghoulish and scary look, but more of a dark and stylish look very much like Naja, a fellow vampire from What We Do in the Shadows. To start developing the makeup look, the first layer that I'm going to do is go over with a light contour colour. Normally I would go in with the colour that is similar to the doll's skin, but I wanted to focus more on the makeup on the outer corners of the eyes, so I wanted this to be quite light in its defining. 
with pink soft pastels and various red pigments, I'm going to start dabbing the colour onto the outer corners of the eyes, being really careful not to go overboard with the pigment. But work in light layers, eventually getting a nice transition of colour over time. Something that was an absolute must for this doll was winged eyeliner. Starting out, I'm going to do a basic shape with brown, so if I wasn't a fan of the shape or anything like that, it wouldn't stain the vinyl. In making the shape of the winged liner, I wanted to make sure I was working with the eye shape that I was creating, using the lines that I'd created on the eyes before as markers. I want the eyeliner to fold around the eyelids, giving the illusion that it's being worn by someone with a partially hooded eye. To do this I created a triangle shape, but had the liner sit above the eyelid creases as opposed to the eyelid itself. This is a very common eyeliner technique done by people with hooded eyes or smaller eyelids, so I wanted to make sure I was replicating this makeup look in my doll's face. When I was working on this doll, I did encounter a little bit of an issue. It's winter here in Sydney, and it's quite cold where I live. When I was doing the face up, I sprayed it outside. I think because of the temperature or something like that, but the varnish kind of settled strangely. I didn't notice it until I started doing the face up, when I started noticing this. The varnish is actually completely chipping away on the places that I'm working on. Of course, this sucks a lot, but accidents like this are inevitable in any project. What I'm going to do is just continue working on the rest of the face in different areas, as to not make the problem worse by peeling any more varnish up. There was another doll that I was working on at the exact same time as this, and that doll's face chipped as well, so it must have been the cold weather or something like that, but I was just sitting there at my desk when I was doing this, just looking at both of the heads and just being like, what the absolute heck is going on? Why is this happening? What I did to rectify this was basically to camouflage the chipping pigment so the vinyl underneath was the same colour, and then gave two big sprays of Mr. Super Clear Varnish, but made sure it wasn't freezing outside like before. For the lips, I really wanted to have a slightly open mouth design, so I can show off her little vampire fangs, though I haven't done this before so do bear with me. Here I did deviate from the original design however. In the doll's original face she had dark brown, almost black lipstick. While I love that look and I think it looks gorgeous, I was really worried that the dark and structured lipstick design would draw away from the teeth. I thought it would look quite nice to instead go with a Korean ombre lips look, as not only is it an absolutely beautiful design, but it also gives very vampy vibes, as if she's just bit into someone. For the teeth, I'm going to use Vallejo Ghost Grey and Vallejo White Acrylic Paint, using a mixed medium to water down the paint, and then apply it to the lips with a fine detail brush. For the front teeth, I used Ghost Grey, and for the fangs, I used White. While this is an absolutely minute difference that doesn't really pick up on camera while filming, I felt this slight bit of differentiation in the shades actually really helped later on to give off the illusion of dimension.
Here I'm going to just do a light pass of pastels, only using the wine colours and blacks to really smoke out the liner and shadows. Funnily enough, I felt I was going way too far with the colours at this point. I remember looking at the doll's head and thinking to myself, oh my gosh, this is too dark, you've absolutely ruined it, and just being an absolute ball of worry. Ironically enough, I sometimes look at this doll now and think that I could have deepened the colours further. Draculaura has black hair, and it actually balanced out the shadowing fantastically and made the colours look quite reserved in comparison. Funny that when you get a new perspective on things, you tend to lose all your worry and anxiety. Rummaging through my art supplies drawer, I found the absolute perfect Draculaura shades in Resin Shimmer that are going to make her skin and makeup look so romantic and dreamy. The colours I found were a berry pink, which will be applied on the eyelid corners, a peach, which will be applied to the cheeks, and a transparent, which will be applied all over. Using a dense eyeshadow brush, I'm just going to pack the pigment in onto the vinyl. It looks absolutely crazy before it's sprayed, but once it's sprayed with a matte varnish, the glittery shimmer turns into a beautiful, natural looking satin. One of the last steps is adding the iconic heart on her cheek. As well, I forgot to film, but with grey I highlighted the upper lash line. During my filming of the face up, I stumbled across the most beautiful channel here on YouTube called Of Crafts and Curious, and I was just in awe at how amazing their work and videos are. I was so inspired by their goth aesthetic doll that they created on their channel specifically where they created amazing piercings for their doll. I've never seen anyone do this before and I just, I had to pay homage. I would very much highly recommend checking out their channel and give them a sub. Links of course will be in the description below. Oh gosh, I was so lucky when I found this jewellery wire in my supply box. Being still in lockdown of course, I was not able to get any new supplies. Finding just what I needed at the bottom of my supply drawer and not even remembering when I bought it feels like such a win. They say that the hobby and buying supplies for the hobby are two completely different things and thankfully my silly buying habits have finally paid off. Grabbing a pin, I'm just going to really carefully pierce the vinyl, being really careful not to push too hard as it would crack the varnish. Grabbing a larger pin, this one is an embroidery needle, I'm just going to dilate that hole. This will make it so I can attach the earrings with ease. Getting my pliers and my earring, I can just plop it into the hole no problem. I'm just going to do three additional earrings on each side. And of course, I'm going to give this doll a septum ring because I love how it looks. Um, be really careful when you're piercing the doll because uh, accidents can happen. Yeah, just uh, pierce it vertically. <laughs> Adding the ring, she now has a septum ring and most definitely has never been pierced anywhere else on her nose and if you say that she has, you're a liar. Time to give this doll some new hair. For the hair, I will be going with 100% acrylic yarn as always. From my stock box, I was able to find this black and this bright pink yarn. Unfortunately, however, I did notice that there was a bit of an issue. When the pink yarn is in its yarn state, it does seem quite bright, but when I brushed it out, I noticed it was so much lighter than I thought it was, more of a bubblegum pink. I tried to look online to try and find a replacement, but sadly it just didn't work out. 
I know that in the grand scheme of things, this is a not issue and it's just, it's nothing. It's a different shade of pink. But I think when you're replicating a, such a loved character, getting the colors wrong can just, it just irks me a bit. <laughs> and I was quite disappointed. So do excuse if the colors aren't right. To start the hair off, I'm going to apply just a thin layer of, of craft glue to the vinyl and we'll be adding straight brushed out yarn fibres to the scalp. The idea I had for the fringe was to do a shadow effect, basically having pink on the bottom and the black on the top. So when you cut and styled it, it would have pink poking through. But of course there was an issue with the shade of pink. Of course. <laughs> the pink was just blending into the skin and you couldn't really differentiate the two colours. It just wasn't giving me that pop of pink and that dramatic look that I was really wanting. Back to the drawing board. What I decided to do instead was to do a section piece of pink on one side of her fringe with the rest being black. Normally I don't style the wefts until I've applied them all. But I wanted to make sure that this colour variation would look nice before proceeding. Grabbing a sharp razor, I'm just going to thin out the fringe and give it a trim. Grabbing a toothbrush and some water, I'm just going to dampen the hair just to see how it will look when it's styled. And it looks very, very cute. Now that I'm happy with how it's looking, I'll start building up the rest of the fringe. Here I'm just adding some pink to the other side, which will be covered by black. Whereas on the other side, it will just be a pink strand that's framed by the black colour. Funnily enough, I thought I was being so nifty with this. I was like, oh yes, this, this is so trendy looking um, with the pop of colour. But once the hair is styled, you don't even see the pink peeking through. You can't see it at all, which sucks. <laughs> um, but you know, these things happen and that's okay. Once the fringe was all applied, I can start working on the rest of the hair. Grabbing some wefts that I've created earlier and folding the glue section onto itself, I create a parting. Working one side at a time, I am going to apply the wefts all along the hairline and will be applying them with some fabric pins that will give it a really taut application and will let it sit really flat. Something that I have always loved is looking at the work of alternative hair colorists. Once I had the parting and the hairline done, I parted the hair wefts and applied some pink wefts to the head. While these won't be seen when you're folding the hair back over, it will give the pigtail an amazing pop of highlights and color once it's styled. While the hair looks really nice in its pigtail, I felt the scalp was quite lacking and needed more sectioned colors. Grabbing the rerouting tool that I'd created out of an embroidery needle and an X-Acto knife handle, I'm going to grab the tiniest amount of pink fibre and will be plunging it into the vinyl along the hairline. I also added some rerouting pink onto the sides of the hair near the ears, so it blended the highlights into the rest of the hair. For some added bulk to the pigtails, I created a bulking weft from leftover yarn. Basically, I just grabbed the wefts and with some glue, I wrapped the glue wefts around each other to create a ponytail. And we'll be attaching it to the scalp using craft glue. Once that was all dry, I can finally give her hair a really good brush and tie it off with a small elastic and can finally start on the other side and start styling. When I was tying off the pigtails, I did position them quite a lot higher than the original design. The pigtails really don't have a set place that they sit um, in the various replications of Draculaura, so I just decided to go with higher pigtails just so that you're able to see the earrings. While in the original design, Draculaura just had her fringe out and no framing hair, I wanted to add these framing pieces. I personally have never been a fan of the look of just a fringe out. Um, and I know that that's just a personal opinion, but I think it gives it more realism to give those framing pieces. 
Of course, if you don't agree, that is completely fine. To style, I just use water and a toothbrush. When I'm happy with how the hair is laying, I'll just brush over them again with some hairspray to keep it in place. For the styling of the pigtails, I had the full intention of just keeping them straight, but I ended up sitting at my desk, just looking at this doll and thinking, there, there's something missing, there's something that's not right. Then it dawned on me when I was referencing the original 2D design and animated series. Draculaura has these gorgeous twirls at the end of her hair, reminding me so much of Blair from Soul Eater. Grabbing a metal straw, I'm going to just grab the pigtails, wrap the hair onto itself, and then using a hair straightener, I'm just going to press the irons onto the hair, which will in turn heat up the straw and will keep the hair in its style. Please, please, please be really careful if you ever decide to replicate this style. Um, maybe wear gloves or something like that, uh, like cotton gloves or something, because um, the straw does heat up quite a lot, but I'm just, uh, I live life dangerously, I guess. <laughs> Once I was happy with the hair, I added just the last steps, which is glossing. With Vallejo Gloss, I am just going to gloss over the eyes and the mouth. With the lips and teeth, I just added gloss all over. But my partner pointed out that with the gloss all over the teeth and the mouth, um, you lose a lot of the definition and it ended up looking as if she's drooling. And of course, we can't have that. So with a super, super small amount of Vallejo Liquid Matte Medium, I just brushed over the teeth with a fine detail brush, getting rid of all that shine. And in all honesty, it does, it does look a lot better and it looks fantastic in photos. Last step is to assemble. I decided against blushing the body as mostly all of her body is covered. So you wouldn't even see any of the blushing even if I did it. I'm really, really so grateful for this doll as it is in such great condition. I didn't have to do any maintenance on the clothes with her clothes back on, I can attach her head and take some photos. So without further ado, here is my revamp of Draculaura. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think of my Draculaura in the comments below, and who would you like to see revamped next? A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters. Your support has helped me create and keep the channel going, so thank you so so much. As always, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it. Make sure to like the video if you like it, and leave a comment below, I love reading your comments. With that all being said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.